Hello whiskey fans, today I'm going to be looking at something that's cropped up in UK supermarkets relatively recently and it's something that you never really used to see until then. This is Tamnavulin. Now Tamnavulin is a Speyside single malt whiskey and if you go far enough back Tamnavulin distillery actually used to be called Tamnavulin Glenlivet because a long long time ago Glenlivet actually used to be a regional style of whiskey as opposed to the Glenlivet distillery that we now think of when you hear the, the term Glenlivet today. Now, in my opinion, Tamnavulin does fall into that very stereotypical bracket of sort of classic Speyside single malt. So anyone out there who's a bit new and they want to try something that's of the Speyside style, this is a really good example because I must say that you do get some, the regions of Scotch whisky are not perfect. You get a lot of distilleries in the Highland and Speyside categories that are technically of that place, but they don't quite match up in terms of their distillery style. And the same can be said of Isla whisky. There's a couple of distilleries on Isla who, in my opinion, really aren't Isla style. But this one is definitely something that I would say that most whiskey drinkers would recognise as a classic Speyside style at first tasting. So the name Tamnavulin actually means the mill on the hill, which they put on all their branding. I'd say the box is pretty old fashioned in a good way. Nice brown colour scheme. It's fairly simple, just about does the job. Now Tamnavulin distillery is actually reasonably new in terms of the Scotch whisky world. It's founded in 1966, so it's not actually been around for that long, and it has had a fair amount of uncertainty in its history. So opened in 1966, it has been closed at various points in its short history. It's now owned by the White and Mackay group, so it's in the same group as Dalmore, Dura, Fetiken, things like that. Now, Tamnavulin whisky was, for a long time, something that you never saw bottled as a single malt, and that's because the distillery operated mainly as a blend fodder producer, so it's producing blend components that would go into the various White and McKay blends. And, in my opinion, whenever you've seen a whisky, a mystery malt, bottled in the supermarkets, which is labelled as a Speyside, if you look at the back of the box and it says that it's been sourced by the White and Mackay group, in my opinion, more often than not, it tends to be Tamnavulin that's in the bottle. Now, here in the UK, it's mainly available as a range of no-aid statement, cask-finished 40% single malts, which is a little bit of a shame, but it's better than nothing. There are a few exclusive bottlings available on the Taiwanese market, which are tend to be quite a bit older. I think they've all got either aid statements or vintages, I haven't had a chance to try any of them because I haven't got access to the Taiwanese market, but there are some very old age statements available over in Taiwan, including a 45-year-old, so that's some of the oldest whiskey that the distillery has ever produced. But looking at the details on their website, it does say that that 45-year-old whiskey is bottled at 40%, which I don't know about you, but that just makes me a little bit angry. They've taken some very special whiskey there, and they've really handicapped it to, well, the only excuse is to make it stretch as far as possible to get as much money out of it as they possibly can. Which is it's just incredible shame that they're producing whiskey with that sort of mindset. But anyway, onto this whiskey that we've got here. Let's have a quick look over the label in the box. It's Tamnavulin Double Cask. So double cask, as I'm reading on the label here, means that this is Tamnavul and single malt Speyside Scotch whiskey, which is matured in American oak barrels with a sherry cask finish. Now, I'm not a huge fan of finishes in general, but I will say that this doesn't really nose or taste like a finished whiskey, in my opinion. It's very coherent and very well integrated, and it doesn't come across flavour dipped in any way. So let's do the obligatory integrity check. So age statement, there is no age statement on this whiskey. There was a 12 year old Tamnavulin available quite a long time ago, but that's long gone. Is it non-chill filtered? Now I've had a look everywhere that I can, including the website, the label and the box, and there's no mention of chill filtration on this. But looking at how clear that is, I would say that that is almost certainly either very heavily filtered or chill filtered. So that's not great. The ABV, sadly, is the minimum 40% that's legal here in the UK. 
And as to colouring, now I've had a look all over the label on this, had a look all over the website, and I had a look at the front, the sides, and the back of the box, and there's nothing that says either way as to whether this is coloured or not, until you look at the bottom of the box. <laughs> now, I'm going to try and get that in focus for you. If you look at the top there, it does actually say not in English because they're not legally obliged to tell us here in the UK. But and I believe that's German on the bottom of the box in quite small font that's not very easy to see. And if we're being honest, it's been hidden on the bottom of the box. That actually tells you that there is spirit caramel gone into this whiskey. So it is artificially coloured. So that's terrible, really, that they're releasing their whiskey. It's great that they're decided to release it as a single malt and be proud of it and show it in its full glory. But then they're also going and artificially colouring it to be dishonest about what you're buying, which, to be honest, is typical behaviour from White and Mackay. You look at all of the products in the White and Mackay group, and I believe I'm right in saying that all of them are coloured and usually coloured quite heavily. And the fact that they've hidden it on the bottom of the box, that just tells you that they know they're doing something wrong, they're ashamed of it, but they've done it anyway. Anyway, that's enough about that. The presentation obviously leaves a lot to be desired, but let's get some in the glass and see what it's like. So Tamnavul in double cask, 40% on the nose. So first things first, on the nose with this one, it's actually quite a bit better than you would expect for something that's artificially coloured, chill filtered and 40% and no aid statement and all of those other stupid terrible things. Getting some really nice and as I said before, stereotypical classic space side notes, so lots of orchard fruits and some lovely apple notes, caramel, some really nice gooseberry. I actually think that it's not a coincidence that this one, the distillery, used to be called Tamnavul in Glenlivet, and it's not a coincidence that it's actually situated very close to the Glenlivet distillery, because this one does, to me, nose and taste quite a lot like a Glenlivet. Other notes on the nose. There's quite a fudgy caramel quality to the nose of this one and also a little note of burnt grist. What I will say though is that despite being 40% and I really wasn't expecting that much of this one it's actually quite pleasant, quite robust. There's plenty of flavour there to be had. So I'm quite pleasantly surprised with that one. Let's see how it tastes. So again, on the palate, classic Speyside really, getting some, a little bit of burnt caramel, lots of orchard fruitiness, so apple, gooseberry, pears, a little bit of banana. There's some sweet sherry on the palate of this one, but again, as I said, it's not, it's not your flavour dipped sherry finish. It really is well integrated. If I was tasting this blind, I wouldn't pick up that it was a sherry finish. It's really very well integrated. It's going to have another sip. Now, something else about this one that I always associate with that classic Speyside style. There's a particular creaminess to the fruity qualities of this whiskey. So it's a little bit like when you have fruit with yogurt poured over it for your breakfast in the morning. As for the finish, it's a medium length finish. It's a little bit mild and simple, but all in all, not too bad for the ABV. There's a little bit of a bitter note on the finish, a little bit of burnt grist, a little bit of bitter oak and a little bit of sort of stewed tea tannins. But I think it's all rescued reasonably well by the constant presence of that fruity maltiness. So as for a grade, I'm going to give this one a C minus. So that's at the kind of bottom end of good. So would I recommend that you buy this whiskey and would I buy this whiskey again myself? Now, as I mentioned, this Tamnavulin is popping up in the supermarkets here in the UK. There's been a couple of other similar expressions. I think they're all 40%, no aid statement. But this is the one that I think has been around the longest. 
does actually say on here, individual batch number 0308. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's like the Monkey Shoulder batch 27. Every bottle of this double cask is batch 308. So that's another little bit of an underhanded thing there. But would I recommend that anyone buys this whiskey? Bearing in mind that it's in the supermarkets, I think if you can get this on offer for the low to mid £20 mark, I'd say yes. It's a really nice little affordable classic Speyside malt. Whereas if you're having to pay full price for this, I would say probably not. Because if I compare this to what I think it's most similar to, and that's going to be the, the entry level Glenlivets, I'd say that this is much, much better than the Glenlivets Founders Reserve, which hopefully will be just completely wiped out soon. We won't have to put up with that crap anymore. But if you compare this to the Glenlivet 12, which when this is on full price is about a similar price point, the Glenlivet 12 is that little bit better. And when you consider that the Glenlivet 12 is that little bit better, and it's a very similar style in my opinion, it just makes buying this one on full price a little bit difficult. So thanks for watching, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on Tamnavulan in the comment section, especially if you've tried any of those very fancy looking and very hard to find exclusive to Taiwan vintage releases. Until then, thanks for watching, and cheers!